here, Gosp. Um, perhaps I could leave the ladies here. Um, don't listen to every word she says. Uh, none of it's true. Um, gentlemen, if you might follow me, we should go about the business of the court. Gentlemen, this way. Um, perhaps we might reunite you with your ladies later. That would probably be a good idea. If I don't know if we ladies are necessarily like. I'm sure the gentlemen might be tired of the ladies. Well, gentlemen, you're better than uh, we will, uh, Maybe we will wait in the great watching chamber. How about that? If we, if we, uh, if we wait in the great watching chamber, then the council can come and find us when they are done with business of state. Very well. You can <laughs> wait when you like, Jane. I'm taking the general. Yes, uh, indeed. You may watch. My Lord John Russell, who is Vinyard in the south of France. Come along, gentlemen, this way, good save you. Right, we have pressing business to uh, talk about. We have to discuss all affairs, international and domestic. Thank you for um, coming to this meeting on such short notice. Um, the King has a matter, a great matter, that must be dealt with imminently. Um, so, uh, gentlemen, I know some of you uh, are old hands here on the Privy Council. My Lord John, you've been here for 30 years, and good service you've been doing us here. Um, but I'll uh, talk you through your references before you go in. Um, I shall place you in your allocated seats. Uh, do not sit in them until the meeting has begun. Uh, any gentleman wearing headwear, remember to remove it in the presence of His Majesty. Very well, if we are all present and correct, I shall perform the knocking of the Privy Council Chamber door. Your Majesty, I have with me the gentlemen of the Privy Council. They request admittance. Step forward and be recognised. My Lord Earl of Southampton, if you will sit with the Lord's Temple over there. My Lord Bishop, Stephen Gargan Winchester, if you could just pick it out on the spiritual side. My Lord Bishop of Durham, if you go right next to us. Uh, you Lord Anthony Brown, which is there. Oh, you sorry. Oh, you put your page, you mean sit with that. Uh, and if you uh, sit by your usual seat, so stand by them for now. The Privy Council is met. God save the King! Be seated, gentlemen. The Secretary will record the business of the day. There is no need for you to do so also. Oh, the council meeting is dismissed. Right, gentlemen, why has you heard the man? All rise for the king. 
come this way, gentlemen. Um, very well, this is most peculiar. I believe we're going to something of a search party uh, and find my uh, will from sister. <laughs> It is clear that George's wife and these other ladies have not managed to persuade her. She's in some, she's flustered for some reason. We, and we will find her before she leaves. Come this way. She is made, right this made way. to leave the court. Which way did she say she was going? Uh, just... <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, sir. No idea. My sister is back. If she were to take, if she were to take the barge, she would most likely go by the east front. Go to the east front. Talk to you over there and ask if she's gone. What news? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Has anyone seen her? Did you ask? Yes, we did. But oh, nobody knew. No one had seen her. Nobody did you look yourself? Yes, we did. And what did you see? Nobody. Very good. George, take one or two and see if she is at the bottom of the great stair there. Yeah. I cannot rightly know where she might If she was most likely she would take the bar. No? There is no sign of her. If, ladies and gentlemen, if you were about to embark upon a great and strange, one might say uncharacteristic, decision, such as Anne has been to ignore my my command, the standing order that we're not we not leave court without permission. What would you, is there? Where would you go if you wanted to reflect upon matters? The chapel. The chapel. The chapel. That's a good thought. Uh, very well. Let us press towards the chapel. Let us see. I do not think she'll be in the chapel. Do you see anything? Has anyone seen her? Stables. 
We found her. Tell you what. Ladies, I I think sometimes it is best if uh, if discussions such as the one that I probably need to have are conducted entirely in private. Uh, quite we'll quite attend to be here. Very well. We'll give his grace space and time. And well, I hope you're proud of yourself. Me, I don't. Why is it always my fault? You said to me. Wasn't I? The, now look, wasn't I the one who just found her? Oh, uh, don't oh, push out at the one. Someone back me up. Is this not you? Yeah. 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 Hasn't everybody been having a go at me all day long? I'm just yeah. trying to do my best in a very difficult situation. Thank you very much. Do you mean this is her? Why do you do that? She's on my side. Why don't you tell us what's going on? What's going on? I've no idea. He's just going to be silent as the grave, and he won't say why Lady Anne is all of a sudden dragged in front of the king. Oh. Not, you're not in the news, are you? Well, he told me that you tell me, and now I'm asking you what the king says. Like, yeah, yeah. She's like, no, I don't know what to do. But it's no secret, Jane, where the king's affection truly lies. Oh, oh. we fight for attention again, Jane. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what's going on. What's going on? What's going on? I don't know. I feel like I'm in a trance at the moment. What's going on? that I have been privy to, uh, Ladies, my Lady Jane. We've got ways of making our husbands very, very, very jealous indeed. Oh, don't do that with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the king comes, the king returns. Save the king. God save, save the, the king. king! God save you all, right you, right you. My friends, I am delighted to say that although today started with some considerable difficulty between my beloved Anne and I. I have we, your memory of that, your words. We are now happily uh, as one once more. I have explained to Anne that perhaps the slight dealt to us by the French king not to recognise Anne's position as my particular favourite, but to pretend instead that she was his mistress. Perhaps it is the spur that I have been needing to realise that the time has come to be more decisive in our dealings with the question of my marriage. I have explained to Anne that henceforth I will have no more gifts or offerings or emissaries from Catherine of Aragon, the Dowager Princess of Wales. She will not be permitted to attempt to sway my mind, either with gifts or with words. Anne is henceforth, as many of you already know, not simply to be known as Mistress Berlin, but to be known as the Marquis of Pembroke. A title which she will hold in her own court. And furthermore, steps are being taken, even as we speak, by Secretary Cromwell and others who work for the Parliament to ensure that the status of England, the Church in England, as being subject to the Pope in Rome, will be short-lived indeed. Those who are interested may apply to Cromwell or any others or to their members of Parliament for more details. But suffice it to be said that Anne is clear that there will soon be a legal framework whereby my divorce may be decided here in England. And I trust now I have set all these matters in train, you will be satisfied. Your Grace, may I thank you most humbly that you have indeed fulfilled all three of my requests for this day. And I am delighted to say that I am now 
almost entirely satisfied. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. I know, of course, Anne, that your heart will never be truly satisfied until you are Queen of England, and this is what I desire more than any other thing. But, that you may be clear, this is my most fervent desire. I have a small gift for you. George. And if in these past few years you have, as you may well have had cause to, doubt the sincerity of my desire to make you my queen, as well as my wife, I trust that uh, if I say that I have to present this to you as a gift this day, you will be clear as the sincerity of that wish. The Queen's jewels. Yes, Your Grace, I find that I can now pronounce myself entirely satisfied with your full intent to make me queen. I am glad to hear it. As these are shortly to be your subjects, perhaps, uh, perhaps you wish to address them as such. May I say to all of you how much I look forward now, in the very near future, of ruling over you as Queen Consort, alongside His Grace the King, in the hope and the prayer that together he and I will create a better church in England. I thank you all for your kindness today. Now, my friends, you may travel home to your parts of my realm, or indeed to the courts to which you've come, and you may, you may tell those that you encounter what you've seen this day, and you may be clear But for anyone who doubts, Henry, King of England, will have a new wife, and soon, I'm quite sure, We'll have a son and heir to continue this Tudor dynasty. I God bless you all. God save the king! Well said. Best not to touch the mic. 